All right, and we are live. We are hey, what's up, everyone? I am here with uh, our friend Martin, aka Say Chess. Uh, how's it going, Martin? Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, uh, Kostya. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it's going great. Uh, it's uh, it's late here in Denmark, but uh, I'm happy to be here on, on the show. I'm I'm feeling like uh, the past year that the uh, dojo has been uh, uh, anger getting me through uh, this uh, pandemic and uh, keeping me motivated to study chess. So, so it's, <laughs> it's great to be uh, be on the show. That's that's awesome. That's glad to hear. Yeah, that wasn't that was never the intention to be the the <laughs> pandemic, you know, channel. But uh, <laughs> it just kind of started at, at the right moment, and we realized, oh man, lots of people are at home, and candidates are happening. It was really because of the candidates, because that was such an interesting tournament, and everyone was at home watching it, and we we're like, yeah. well, we got to start. You know, we have something to uh, to cover. Um, so. Folks might know you from uh, different places. If you're on chess Twitter, then you probably have seen Martin uh, say chess. Um, I just posted a bunch of links in um, the chat because uh, basically Martin does a ton of stuff. This is um, one of the reasons I wanted to have him on on the show. Um, uh, actually, Martin and I have done videos before together, which we can uh, talk about. But Martin actually makes and I, I would say creates a lot of really good resources, uh, especially for adult improvers. Um, so I would say you're part of the original ten chess punks. Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, that's uh, correct. And uh, and I was, I think I was the one that suggested to Neil that uh, we should have a hashtag. So nice. <laughs> so I'm I'm one part of the puzzle. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I never really used Twitter before uh, joining uh, Chess Twitter. Uh, so. And I still only use Twitter for for chess stuff, mm -hmm. so um, so and I just stumbled across it and discovered there was actually some uh, some people uh, discussing uh, chess on uh, on Twitter and celebrating uh, the small wins of uh, uh, adult uh, improving in chess and uh, and then I started also uh, tweeting about my own uh, progress uh, in chess and. Also, uh, what I've been up to and training and and, and thoughts and, and getting feedback. So, and so when was that? When did you start becoming active on Chess Twitter? I think I think it was creating my profile back in 2017. But I, I, I I'm not sure if I started directly after uh, tweeting. But uh, it's a couple of years back now. Uh, so, and, but I, I guess I've been more and more active on Twitter. Now I need to, to dial back a, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super active. <laughs> uh, which, yeah, actually, a lot, lot of stuff I want to ask you. I got to add Twitter to my <laughs> to my list. Um, but that's cool. I love that we have the the theory of the chess bunks kind of slowly developing because, uh, of course, we had Neil Bruce on the dojo. Shout out to Neil, who I think is in, in the chat. Yep. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, he's one of the originals. And of course, you guys have done a few interviews with Ben for Perpetual Chess. Yeah. Um, uh, and so people can listen to to your interviews um, with Ben Johnson uh, to find out more about um, you know stuff you've been doing in the past and uh, your previous like improvement um, projects. Um, so there's. Yeah, many things I want to get to, but maybe we could just start with your personal background, Martin. You mentioned you're uh, living in Denmark and you have a uh, family. Maybe yeah. you could share folks a little bit of, about them and um, what you're doing during your, your daytime. Yeah, um, yeah, I live uh, in the countryside, uh, not not so long from Copenhagen. Um, and uh, and uh, I have uh, three kids, um, two, two girls and a boy, uh, two, uh, six and eight years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, my wife, uh, who is uh, currently studying to uh, to become a, she's changing lanes from from social worker to 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 daycare. Uh, and uh, yeah, then myself, I, I work in Copenhagen in, in the Danish Parliament um, as an archivist. Um, oh, cool! So and and there I um, both help the the member of parliaments and in the library and and also take talk with the uh, uh, people who have questions about uh, legislation and and uh, also uh, historical questions and 
archivist. So Ar archival metas. You make sure that things kind of get like stored and saved, like important historical documents and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the paper documents I take care of, uh, the, the constitution and stuff like that. Wow, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's cool because that actually it's it's kind of similar. I'm just realizing now to some of your. Um, chess projects because like you've been maintaining uh, a blog for several years now like kind of I guess archiving like your, your chess progress and um, I, I know you recently came out with a substack can you clue me in on what the difference is between a blog and a substack yeah <laughs> I, I guess I'm just a very uh, curious all, about all the technology and, right. and what's uh, uh, it's about and uh, and at, at my blog, I had this uh, newsletter um, where I also uh, distributed my my book, mm -hmm. um, a blindfold endgame visualization, uh, and to those people who was signed up, I sent out uh, a free copy and uh, when I when it was done, and and uh, I think uh, 400 people signed up to the newsletter when I was uh, promoting the book, and and then after that I. I thought, okay, let's try to 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 make something out of this newsletter, and I've um, then uh, moved it to to Substack. Uh, where uh, I, my current plan is to to write some 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 st about stuff that interests me about training, and and also what I've been doing, and also my next book, uh, which also uh, is, will be about uh, opening lines in in blindfold chess uh, and. Um, so, compared to the blog where I will post uh, games uh, mostly uh, that I play with annotations, um, that's that's cu how it is cur currently. I see. I got you. So yeah, the blog is kind of documenting your own journey, and then the newsletter is more about just sending out useful resources to folks that are kind of interested in uh, chess yeah, improvement. Yeah, but but I, I I won't say. Maybe I will also share more of my own journey and on on the newsletter. We'll see how it uh, develops, but uh, I think right. Substack is a really interesting place uh, where there's, yeah, there's, uh, I discovered, uh, I follow Nate uh, Sloan on, on Twitter, mm -hmm. and he has uh, an interesting uh, newsletter there, and also JJ Lang has a, a newsletter, um, Chess Field, uh, and yeah, the, those two. Uh, inspired me also to, to switch my, my newsletter to uh, to Substack. Oh, cool. I just wrote the names you mentioned in the chat for people who want to um, yeah. Google those names, Nate Solon and, and JG Lang, a yeah. friend of ours, uh, aka Chess Fields. And um, OK, you have a fan. Steve Nash is a fan of your um, newsletter. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, currently working on a, on a, um, a post about uh, chess and coffee. So uh, that will be the next uh, article I will post. Oh, chess and coffee. Can you tell me more about that? Is that a, a series? Um, no, it's just a, just a thought I got uh, <laughs> <laughs> about uh, like a lot of chess players drink coffee during games, and uh, and like I I drink coffee too, and uh, and caffeine is uh, is is a. Uh, uh, a drug of co uh, of some sort. So, so why why not uh, look a little bit into what uh, we are drinking while we're playing chess and maybe how it affects us and maybe oh, ask the question: Can we um, should we do it in another, another way or some sort of like that? So mm. I think it's uh, interesting uh, to just go a little bit deeper into subjects like that. Yeah, for sure. I, I have thought about that a little bit, actually. I really um, I've learned that for classical games, I definitely enjoy having a hot beverage. It's just just very nice <laughs> to have it next yeah. to you. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, as, so as, as, it does experience sometimes that when then then there's like you can pay a, an amount of uh, and then there's free coffee during the games. And and some, sometimes it just it, I drink too many cups of coffee during game. <laughs> when it's available, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definitely get that. Well, in the US, I don't, you got to pay for it all over the place. So it's... Okay. <laughs> yeah, but thankfully we don't have that, <laughs> that issue. Um, okay, people are asking about your age. I think you're in your 30s, is that right? Yeah, uh, 35. 
Okay, cool. And also, um, people are asking about your um, Twitch. That is something you've been doing more lately, right? Doing some streaming? Yeah, I, I have also um, done some streams on Twitch. Um, I've, I've taken a little bit break on, on YouTube and Twitch, um, maybe, maybe, mainly because it, uh, I think uh, YouTube, it, it, it uh, takes a lot of time um, making these uh, videos and editing and and when I, I, I haven't really uh, probably uh, broken the, the 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 key to making uh, uh, videos that gets a huge amount of views so <laughs> so even though that I get uh, positive comments and stuff like that it's and it, that's in, encouraging that it can something sometimes be be hard to put a lot of energy into a video and then you get 40 views or, or something like that so I've thought, okay, maybe maybe I can use my my energy uh, better somewhere, <laughs> and 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 now now I'm putting my energy into the newsletter at the moment. But I, I think I have I have an idea of maybe when I'm playing these longer games that I want to um, uh, just uh, stream them like uh, Wishnu do, it does and 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 on Twitch just so people can hang around and then follow the game and. Yeah. So without any any comments, but maybe some light background music. Right. Um, so I I, I, th I have a plans about doing more more of that on on Switch. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. I mean, there's always room for for more streaming. And well, hopefully people follow your YouTube channel. Are you uh, just say chess on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well. Um, Hopefully, get some some more subscribers. Yeah, please subscribe. <laughs> uh, I think I think you definitely deserve it. You give out uh, a lot of I think really useful stuff um, for free, even if it's just like you know connecting people to certain resources that they didn't know about before, certain um, channels. Uh, I want to ask you about your. Um, so you had your, I believe it was your first book that you basically wrote like. It, feel, it feels like the whole thing took like maybe a year, like the whole from start to finish. Like I remember when you were first getting interested in like uh, blindfold training <laughs> yeah. and you were just like posting some puzzles and um, there were some blindfold puzzles on, on perpetual chess. And then all of a sudden, I feel like I just remember you were just asked like, yeah, would people be interested if I like posted some blindfold puzzles here and there? And everyone's like, yeah, go for it. And then yeah. <laughs> now you have like a, a whole like a beautiful book of like. So how yeah. did that, what was that process like? I mean, start to finish. Yeah, it was just. Uh, I think it was just. Uh, I posted one of those of those uh, puzzles, and and uh, yeah, it got really good uh, feedback and and traction. And I thought, okay, uh, maybe I'm onto something. And 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 then I I started working on on the project, and and thought, okay, maybe I maybe I can self publish this on on Amazon and. And then, then I looked uh, deeper into it, and then I then I thought, okay, how can how can a, a, a guy with the eighteen hundred uh, feeder rating uh, publish a, a chess book uh, without uh, <laughs> getting uh, in trouble and and uh, without and also making a, a serious product? And and then I thought, okay, I need to uh, to engage uh, with the and some users and 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 then I got the idea of uh, this newsletter and and I promised that everyone that signed up uh, that free uh, PDF copy when it was done and and I think uh, it worked uh, out really well uh, I got a lot of feedback uh, uh, from from the the people who signed up and 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 also from uh, grandmasters and and very strong players who uh, who gave me very valuable uh, feedback. So so it all uh, uh, made the the book uh, better. And yeah, I tried to listen to all the feedback I got, and 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 I'm I'm really happy about the the result. So and yeah, and I, I've been extremely happy about the, the support I've been given by the the community also. So that's been been great also. Um, oh, that's so. awesome. Yeah, so actually, some people are recognizing you because they have the book, but they didn't realize <laughs> you were the author. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, Martin's book is basically uh, a book of fifty 
problems um, where you're presented the puzzle without a board. So the idea is to work on your blindfold visualization. And the way some of the problems work is you're just given the pieces and the squares that they're on. So white king is on G2, white's rook is on, etc. And and then you're given the puzzle like that. And the idea is that you try to visualize uh, the position in your head and and solve it from from there. So the puzzles themselves are not necessarily super challenging, uh, but uh, the training is, of course, that you're having to visualize it all on your own and then solving the puzzle uh, from there, which, um, in my experience, has always helped uh, with uh, working on my own visualization. I remember uh, <clears throat> playing blindfold chess growing up, and um, when I was uh, I started when I was around 1900 or so, I would I would try to play one or two blindfold games with with my friends. Um, and uh, slowly just got better, and I really felt like my visualization visualization got uh, a lot stronger. Uh, the book is called Blindfold Endgame Visualization, and I think the plan, Martin, is you're now working on another one. You mentioned blindfold uh, yeah. opening visualization. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and that I can tell you a little bit about uh, that book. Yeah, um, um, I have uh, retrieved. Uh, from the Lightchess uh, puzzle base, I have retrieved uh, uh, all the opening positions uh, from there. And then I have looked at uh, how often this position uh, occurs in in over, uh, on uh, games on, on Lightchess. And, uh, and then I have sorted them uh, after how often people find the, the right move in, in, in these positions. And mm. then I have picked uh, the, the puzzles I liked from from this uh, data set. Um, so that's it will be the book will be a uh, hundred uh, opening lines uh, between I think uh, between uh, five or, or ten moves, uh, twelve moves uh, out uh, will will be the longest, and and then you will have to find the the, the move uh, at the end of the the, the line. So you're going to um, be giving the first moves of the full game leading up to the opening tactic. Yeah, and yeah. The idea is to... But, but, it, but it will not be like specific from from specific games, but because it will be all be from position that occurs uh, frequently. It's like uh, typical not, opening traps. Yeah, but I will, I've also added... Uh, uh, non tactics so there will also be some positions where that it's just to find the the uh, a sensible move uh, so you so you don't know for sure that there is a tactic in the in in the specific puzzle so there's going to be uh oh so is there a clear solution for each puzzle or do some puzzles there's no clear solution most most puzzles there will be a tactic but some puzzles there will be no uh, not uh, a clear move uh, so you have to be, to be alert, but and 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 you can't automatically look for tactics always. You also have to to mm-hmm. judge if uh, a certain move, uh, if you can take on on f seven or or it's it's better to um, to uh, to play a developing move. Right. I mean, honestly, and, uh, as um as a chess reader, you know, <laughs> that really bums me out. <laughs> <laughs> but as a chess coach, I definitely respect that <laughs> that approach. Yeah, I've I've sent uh, the first uh, twenty uh, positions out to the the people on the Substack newsletter, oh, cool. and 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 then I added a questionnaire um, where people could fill in uh, their replies to the, the 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 puzzle. So you can go to my Substack newsletter and try try out the first uh, twenty positions from from the book. And 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 on the first ten, uh, I could see that one of the the puzzles that gave pe- people problems was uh, what the what the one where there was no no tactic. So mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. And then they're like, "What the heck is this? I spent so much time." <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but it is useful because in a game, I mean, uh, you know, th- th- there are many moments where we it looks like we might have something, but in a game, you're never sure. You never know that for sure. There's yeah. a solution. So. Yeah, uh, I think there is some value into um, into building up uh, some healthy skepticism. Yeah, because it's very easy when you're solving a puzzle to just assume it's the obvious move, and then not fully calculate it out like you would you would have to in a game. 
So yeah. I think it is good that you're you're throwing in some uh, like some red herrings in there. Also, I, I also the, I like the um, the book by Ray Chang's uh, puzzle book, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that's that's also inspiration for why I've I've chose this model in in with the, this book. So, oh, cool. Um, yeah, I've heard good things about that one. Yeah, I I, I can re- recommend that book. Oh, great! And so I I also wanted to ask you. How have you felt the blindfold training um, has helped your own chess? Um, I, I, find, I think it's a little bit hard to to um, to say if it's if if I've been a, become a stronger player uh, with this because a lot of the work with the book uh, has not been blindfold training uh, because. Uh, it's been editing and setting up stuff. Uh, so, and then to pick up the puzzle, I needed to look at the solution to see if it was too tough to, uh, <laughs> to include in the book. And right. so, so it's, it, I hope it will help uh, the readers uh, more than, uh, that than it helped me. But um, as, as inspired by the book, uh, there was uh, uh, an Indian uh, uh, engineer uh, called, uh, named uh, Vish- Vishwas, I think his name is. Uh, I'm a, I talked with him uh, on Twitter, mm-hmm. and he, uh, he he made a small uh, program, uh, a tactic trainer uh, based on the idea of my book that he, yeah, uh, that he uh, made, which is the end game positions from uh, the lightest puzzle breaks that you can solve in the same way, way manner as the my book is, is structured and and that that is also available on my my blog so and these puzzles are actually uh, easier to solve than the ones in in my book and i also enjoyed solving these puzzles uh, and i find that uh, and uh, good practice uh, and and i w- i would say also i made the book also because i i wanted to I didn't feel like I was very good at this blindfold. Uh, I was always, when I come to the chess club, I can hear people uh, like discussing lines after the game. You can play like like this, 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 and they could just uh, see the whole position in front of them. I was very, uh, yeah, I was a bit uh, puzzled by how how was this possible. And yeah, I wanted to 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 develop this skill also and. Uh, and, and find out how how other players uh, uh, did this and yeah yeah I feel like, and, right uh, no sorry I feel like people might not know this but um, having a good uh, visualization uh, that allows you to like discuss a game right with with just the moves without the board it, it can help you because it means it's much easier to get a post mortem with a stronger player if you don't need to set up a board and look at the position. So yeah. if you like play a game against someone and then afterwards you can talk to them about it, it's very easy for them to discuss moves with you and you can get a lot of um, a lot of value out of it. You can also like ask a GM, you know, about their game. Like you saw some position they had, like you want to know what they played. You go up to them and be like, oh, yeah, hey, what did you play in that position? And they can tell you and like you can actually communicate with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it- it is it is it is a bit of a handicap to to set up a board and and say what did you play in this position? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> you probably won't even be able to recreate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, and but I also I, I did a, on my newsletter also I did a questionnaire about how people across the rating uh, visualized the board and uh, and I found that the results uh, quite interesting because. Uh, the results showed that uh, some people just uh, have a clear picture of the board, uh, and 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 but also strong players don't necessarily see a, a strong uh, visual picture of the board, but they instead have this um, connectiveness of the, the the pieces and 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 quickly can logically tell that that this is a, a good move and not uh, and I I I. I I posted uh, the results uh, in a post, and uh, I found that, yeah, it it showed that people are different, and and some people can can easily create these visual pictures, and others uh, rely on, on on logic. And and the stronger you get, you the, the better this uh, logic uh, 
gets, I think. Yeah, that's fascinating to me um, that people can visualize and calculate, but without the visual representation. It sounds like it's uh, it, it can be very different from player to player. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm certainly in the visual group, um, but I would say I don't see the full board. I would just maybe just see fragments and maybe the rest of it I can kind of um, feel. So if there's like a Bishop Fianchetto that's hitting the whole diagonal, even mm. if I'm looking at one side of the board, I can still kind of feel like where the Bishop is hitting. Um, so in my mind, I might just be visualizing a part of it, but can still figure it out. But there are lots of players apparently with um, Aphantasia I hear uh, quite quite often. Not even sure if I'm saying that right, uh, which means they can't visualize much or I mean, it maybe just doesn't work uh, the same, but are still able to play blindfold, which blows my mind. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how but <laughs> yeah I, I ask a question about if people could... Uh, what they saw when they closed their eyes and and tried to uh, to visualize the board if they saw a two two D uh, board or a three D or, or or a blurry image of a chessboard and or, or nothing darkness and I think it was about ten uh, percent who answered they, they they were it was complete darkness uh, I couldn't make a picture of anything um, I th- and I looked into to the, the the numbers of about how many have this uh, infantasia i can't pronounce it but uh, i think it was about three to five percent of the population but i I could imagine it would be harder to visualize a chessboard uh, than uh, compared to other objects uh, due to the 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 patterns of the board and uh, and yeah i I just think the chessboard is a little bit harder to visualize compared to an an apple or something like that Uh, you you would think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, that's just just my assumption. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so apparently, David David Pruis uh, on this channel um, also actually can't visualize anything, which is just remarkable because I mean his his calculation is very is incredible. I mean he can see incredibly deep. Uh, uh, so that's that's just fascinating to me. I just don't. <laughs> I don't quite. Yeah, I, 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 I think that it was also. Yeah interesting this the survey i did because i don't think that something like chess players talk too much about is like how you actually see see the the board in your, in your mind's eye uh, right. i think it's very different from player to player it, it it really feels like it is um and people do um do ask that like what exactly are you seeing are you seeing the full board are you seeing 2d pieces 3d pieces it would be interesting to kind of ask more players uh, to describe uh, as accurately as they can what what the process is like, and yeah, I mean David will play blindfold. He'll play like um, well, he was doing blindfold blindfold simuls. I think he he did something like uh, like eight to ten games, you know, the other week. Yeah, is, impressive. Yeah, <laughs> especially <laughs> without the, the the visual component. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Okay, so you mentioned the plan for like the blindfold um, opening book, which sounds really interesting and useful because it, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone because you're showing people like typical tactics that can come up from the openings that they play and they get to work on their blindfold skills, which I think is is really important. Um, and uh, David has also been doing, I'll just quickly plug a blindfold series where he's been um, kind of like teaching people how to read from a book, like only using the diagrams, like not having to set up the the position. Um, yeah, I think it was really a good instruction by David. I, I saw one of his uh, lessons and I think it's, uh, it's, it's very useful uh, practice. Oh, cool. And I think very accessible. I think people often think it's very difficult because it is hard, like the very first time that you try to visualize a, a chess position. Um, but almost everyone I've heard from says it gets easier with just a little bit of, of practice, just consistency and it, the ability, the skill just kind of develops slowly and slowly. Yeah. Um, okay, next up. Uh, so you've also, well, you've also organized a bunch of stuff. You run the Twitter chess tournament. Yes. Uh, uh, 
um, with Matt, right? AK, uh, why must I lose to this idiot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he has been uh, co-organizing uh, uh, the tournament uh, together with me. And, and it, it started with another idea that uh, I had I had some issues uh, getting uh, uh, playing time uh, because uh, uh, having small kids, uh, it, it was sometimes hard to, uh, to 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 play in the evening, evenings in, in Denmark, and I, I uh, and it's still too long to be away a whole weekend uh, for for my my family, and why? Well, so these weekend tournaments is uh, a little bit hard to to uh, to play. Uh, so I thought, okay, why not? Uh, organize uh, a tournament and yeah then the first one 25 people signed up and i think the it, it was uh yeah it's it's like the the dojo ladder time control uh, today and and uh, uh the second tournament uh, i think uh, grew to about 60 people and then the third tournament was about 125 people and yeah the format was uh, quite quite long for that term, tournament because there was first a group stage and then there was a playoff stage and uh, yeah it was it was a big, big task to to organize this tournament and uh, with so many new players joining the tournament uh, we also ran into some uh, some concerns with the cheating and yeah, it was uh, it was a big task to to uh, to uh, to run this the tournament and I wouldn't say the last tournament was a, a big success, but uh, I feel like that that, that was uh, also good games and and people got some good practice out of it. And and I feel like it, that at the end of that, uh, Matt helped uh, the dojo set up uh, That's right. uh, the the dojo ladder. And I feel like okay, now now I, there's no 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 need for such tournament anymore because uh, you can just go over to <laughs> the dojo ladder and and and, and find a, a a a playing partner. So I've also done that uh, after after this. But I I won't say maybe. Maybe I will organize a, another tournament at some point, but uh, it's also a, a big job to to run these tournaments. Yeah, well, I really I really appreciate that. I actually thought it was um, still running. Um, yeah, like, I think the, the the third tournament was uh, running at the when. Oh, gotcha. So the third one was the the final one for now. Yeah, yeah, and we have run some also some rapid tournaments, but uh, that was only one day events. Gotcha. Um, maybe we could talk about the the cheating thing a little bit because it's like we're kind of in a similar position with Dojo. We're like, you know, organizing these kind of smaller events uh, and we're just using, you know, chess.com, Lee Chess for people to, to play their games. Uh, and we don't have any special powers in terms of like investigating uh, yeah. someone who might be uh, cheating. Like we can look at the games just like anyone else and see that they're suspicious, but like ultimately closing the account. Uh, comes down to like the sites like chess.com and, and, and yeah. chat. So how did you handle people, you know, like being suspicious of others, like you seeing the games and, and feeling suspicious? Like, what was that like? Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a rabbit hole you can go into. And, and it's, it's, uh, it was a real issue because some people played uh, only a few games from their accounts uh, and then, there was not enough, enough da data for for, for Lighters to uh, to act on it, and that's an issue uh, because you can then see that uh, this is just a very very strange play, and so yeah, we we, we had to uh, to exclude. I think we excluded two players from the tournament um, that was not uh, yeah, banned by by Lighters. Um, oh. But I think if I was to do it today, I would just uh, let Lighters uh, decide <laughs> because it's it's easier from an organizer standpoint. But point, but uh, yeah, but it also has some downsides. So uh, I really feel like there's no optimal solution to to this uh, this problem. Yeah, that's um, that's unfortunate. I don't think we've had to like ban or kick anyone out that didn't first have their account closed because then of course you just 
your decision is made. Um, yeah. But that, yeah, that's, that's a very tough one when it's like clearly a lot of, uh, like circumstantial evidence. Uh, but, uh, the site isn't like really doing much. Um, but, um, I, I also think that, that like when, when it is a public tournament and people can find out who people are, you also need to be really careful about, about uh, people's uh, reputation. And, and uh, yeah, I think it's better to be safe than than sorry, I guess, in these uh, these cases. Uh, and, and then just say that it's it's for practice. And uh, it's, of course, something else when, when you play for money. Um, which the the Twitter chess tournament hasn't been uh, been about. It was it has mainly been about the uh, practice, but uh, there was also a competition element in the in 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 the tournaments. So I think it's a good solution to the, to have this uh, streaming uh, while you play the tournaments. Uh, but I I guess that also excludes some players uh, to to enter the tournaments. Right, for sure. Yeah, that I think would be exclusive. Even um, well, one measure that a lot of people ask for is just having people attach their real names to their accounts or having yeah. to su submit like a, a license or ID or something, um, which is already a little bit exclusionary, uh, mainly because a lot of people just want to stay anonymous. But um, yeah, like you said, there, there definitely isn't a perfect solution to this. Um, I, I do want to ask you, I mean, you're on Twitter a lot and, um, but you manage to kind of avoid, like, I never see you in a Twitter fight with someone else. So even though there's all this like drama going on and like, there's like drama, there's like cheating accusations. There's like always people arguing about something. Somehow I feel like you're able to stay out of it, even though you are very active on Twitter. So it's not like you're just not on Twitter, <laughs> but you're on Twitter, but you manage to stay fairly positive so how do you do you have any special tricks for that or what do you think uh, i would guess like i'm i'm a fairly calm person and i'm also uh, trying to to take account if people are having uh, some kind of uh, other standpoint than me and i f find it it's okay to be a uh, in the same community and have different uh, political opinions and and stuff like that you don't need to go at the the other people's throats just because uh, you have a, another view and st stuff like that and um and i think also yeah i i, I played uh, american football uh, when i was uh, when i was a teen and my my american football coach always said that i needed to be more aggressive uh, and that was uh, <laughs> One of my why uh, maybe why I never became a a, a, a great uh, offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> also, maybe because I'm I'm quite uh, I'm quite uh, tall and <laughs> and not uh, so heavy, so <laughs> that was another issue. But uh, yeah, I I, I, I try to stay positive and 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 also uh, I don't mind. Uh, uh, agree uh, saying if i'm been been wrong and <laughs> mm -hmm. and and yeah i think i think that's uh, that's some of the reasons i hope uh, uh, that makes sense did you play american <laughs> football in in denmark is that a thing going yeah, up? yeah yeah oh that's cool i didn't know that. it's a small sport in denmark but uh, yeah uh, yeah it's a lot of fun yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I, I played many sports, but uh, but yeah, for, for some years I played American football. That was fun. <laughs> wow. wow. Um, okay, cool. So, well, I, it's like, it sounds so obvious when you say it. Yeah, like people can have different opinions and, you know, chances yeah, are, you know, you're not 100% right about everything. So <laughs> someone else might have a perspective. Yeah, but I, I just feel like a lot of uh, disagreement is about uh, like I've I've I also discussed the stuff with you on Twitter, and I I, I feel like you can come to some kind of uh, conclusion without uh, needing to go uh, any unnecessary steps just 
to to create the drama and stuff like that. So I, I try to keep it uh, constructive and 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 positive. Cool. Yeah, I wish um, I wish we were more like you. We we're all more. Like you. <laughs> I, I, I I I haven't seen you in many Twitter fights either. <laughs> well, I've been in I've been in a few. <laughs> um, but yeah, I try to I try to do more reading nowadays. <laughs> the reading is is the way to be. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. I, I also wanted to ask you about um, your new site, which is uh, a very cool site for YouTube channels. Uh, we were very appreciative when you launched this because we felt like it would be really helpful for Dojo. Um, but the site is basically how to play chess dot online, right? That's that's the URL, and it's yeah. um, essentially a collection of uh, YouTube channels that do chess content. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe you could just say a little bit about what what the idea was and how that yeah. came about. Yeah, the the idea for 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 this site the, came when yeah from my own struggles with having a YouTube channel, like uh, I guess, and also uh, listening to other creators uh, having uh, issues uh, getting surfaced on on the platform. Um, and and then I got this idea: Why not uh, make a, a curated uh, stream of uh, of only chess um, channels uh, that, and let make make a stream like from the YouTube uh, front page uh, like that, but just with the uh, new chess content. And uh, and then I thought, okay, can I do this? And and then, then I tried to to make the site. I'm not the uh, uh, IT specialist, but uh, I think the result is uh, is is decent and and is functional. Um, so, and I've I've picked uh, all, all the channels that I think makes uh, instructive uh, chess content. Um, I've I've. Uh, not taking in those channels that is primarily Twitch focused, like where there's only uh, recaps from streams and and a lot of uh, bullet chess and something like that. That those uh, those channels I have uh, I have left out. Uh, and and but other than that, uh, that and there's also some some words that I have that won't appear in the streams, like. Uh, so like uh, bullet and bomb cloud and uh, <laughs> there's those short short videos and stuff like that. I'm trying to 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 keep it uh, instructive and and interesting. So I hope people will check out the site and and also maybe and bookmark it so they can. I I, I use it to see uh, when there's published new uh, videos and 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 actually you will discover that. There are some creators out there that you haven't yet uh, noticed, and and who definitely deserves a, a subscription and and to check out the the material. That's cool. So it's yeah, basically a collection of these like you know YouTube channels, and <clears throat> uh, I guess it, it just gives preference to the most recent videos that are being posted. Yeah. Um, if I get more time at some point, maybe I will also make a, an opening section. Or, uh, other other ways to to filter the videos, but for mm -hmm. now it's uh, it's it's based on the newest uh, videos published. I gotcha. And um, okay, I guess my next question is: uh, Are you um, do you have any plans to play over the board? Have you already played over the board since the pandemic started? Um, I have. There has uh, been. I, I think there was. Uh, there was I played one game uh, where there was uh, where it was possible for him to play in Denmark, uh, and besides that, I haven't I haven't played uh, yet. And and currently we can't play uh, chess. Um, so, but there's I think I think uh, I can't remember the plan exactly, but I think next month or something like that I get uh, indoor sports is should be possible. Oh, so you're expecting for it to be possible. Uh, within the next few months, yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, um, and but I'm 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 currently scheduled to be uh, getting uh, vaccinated uh, in June or July or something like that. So, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if I need to to have this to play games. But uh, we'll see. 
Um, I haven't I haven't yet planned anything, but I, it has been, been a, a long waiting time, and I, I want I want to get back to play because I felt like when when uh, COVID hit, uh, I was doing quite well uh, over the board, and I, I had a, an I, I have an unbeaten streak of uh, the last 10, 10 games I haven't lost, so so I feel like uh, I'm lo- looking have something to uh, to. Uh, to look forward to, I hope, um, and con- hopefully continue my my streak. But uh, nothing shared sh- sh- your leg yet. Mm-hmm. Have you been doing any um, training, like anticipating the eventual return? Um, I I try to to play the longer games. I've I've joined the the, the dojo uh, yeah, April yeah. Classic uh, here in a- April, and uh, and also played the uh, organized uh, longer games uh, with people on on Twitter and on the Tokyo ladder and yeah th- that was that has been uh, my 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 way of uh, preparing and and also uh, yeah trying to to uh, to study chess cool um okay so well you of course have been around in like the community for a while and you've interacted with like a lot of adult improvers um is there any like i guess advice you would give to people who are kind of newer to this because yeah because now you've got like you've got a couple years and all like the pog champs people and the queen's gambit people and even like the the people that joined from the world champ last world championship match like carlson caruana so like what would you what would you advise to like you know working adult family uh, you know, loves chess, like wants to get better, but like just doesn't know what to study. Like, are you a fan of um, Chessable or any other kinds of like um, resources or, or apps? I, I, yeah, I, I would say I've been, uh, I've, I've, I've tried it, uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I think that's... Uh, pros and cons about the, the different methods and and yeah you had neil on uh, last uh, last uh, episode and I, I think neil is 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 very structured in his approach uh, to uh, to chess and i sometimes uh, envy uh, envy some of that uh, um, because I have had some some tendencies to to like switch from one idea to the next, and also maybe also one of the reasons why I've created all these projects is because I get many strange ideas I want to to try out, and and so. But at the same time, it it has also kept kept uh, my interest in uh, chess alive, and I, I feel that it's also important that to find something you you, you enjoy and 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 create something interesting and and definitely find that being part of a community has uh, has made the, the the chess journey more fun for me uh, there's a social aspect also um even though that's not the same as going to to the chess club it's it's it, you can you can talk to people and and write and and uh, and i feel like i also got to know uh, a, a few people also along the way and 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 i think that's that's great to to take part in and i i would encourage people to 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 share that journey also with with training and yeah because it motivates me to to uh, to 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 talk with others and right. yeah that's what that's what david has been saying uh lately i've been hearing him talk about it a lot that like regardless of what uh he's been doing or others doing it it always seems more helpful if you're doing it with uh someone else with a training partner so yeah. it does seem to be almost like a universal i mean i'm sure there are people who work j- just work better on their own or prefer it but like it does seem to come up a lot like the idea of training partners and just having someone to spar with or analyze a game with uh, if nothing else, it might just get you to do more chess in the first place because you're just spending uh, that time with someone else. I know for me, if I agree that I'm going to train with someone for two hours, then we're probably going to train for two hours. And if I schedule myself to train for two hours, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so that that seems like a, a pretty common um, occurrence. Were you a part of any chess clubs uh, before the the pandemic that you would go to? 
Yeah, been, I, I, I joined first joined a, a chess club uh, when I was 18, mm. um, and and then I played on and off uh, during uh, the years. And but hit, more recently, I'm, I'm been taking chess more seriously, but uh, but still with the limitations of uh, of family life and 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 a job and and, and stuff like that. So it's still. Uh, but I've I've devoted more time uh, the last uh, years uh, to chess, definitely. Um, I should I should when I was studying at the university, I I, I had a bunch of time I could uh, have have spent on chess uh, instead of just uh, procrastinating uh, with my studies. I could uh, have been uh, much more uh, effective. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> I didn't know better. <laughs> yeah. Back then. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I think about that too. I waste a lot of time when I was uh, growing up, you know, super talented prodigy or whatever. No, that's not how people <laughs> saw me, but I feel like I could have been had I, had I put more time in it. But I always just think about like, well, you know, you have you have your life in front of you. So, so yeah, imagine you, yeah. what you could be saying 10, 20 years from now. Yeah, you, you 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 can you can you can decide to make the changes now and and not just feel sorry about the missed opportunities in the past. But uh, yeah, so you should definitely it's never too late to start uh, studying chess. I guess is uh, the main advice. I think so. Yeah, I think that there's always there's always time. Um, and, and I was in regards to training partners. I just want to add that I think it's great when when you can have a. Uh, a post postmortem on on Skype with people you just played with. Uh, I think as I think it's a good opportunity to to take, uh, even if it can sometimes be a little bit uh, rough when you if you are lost uh, to 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 talk to uh, somebody you don't know on on Skype. But but I think it's a it's a good uh, opportunity also uh, that the the technology today enables. Yeah, of course. Right. That's that's really changed things. Now you can just connect with people. You can obviously, you know, I mean, we take it for granted that you can play against people 24 seven, but that definitely was not the case for most <laughs> of chess, chess history. You had to travel to, to find opponents. And now, yeah, you have um, well, obviously you guys have Dojo. You can find players there. But um, if you're on chess Twitter, if you're on Twitter, I think you should definitely join like the chess Twitter group there's nothing special you have to do i think in general people are very nice and welcoming and so literally you just have to just use the hashtag chess bunks and people will be nice to you like just post a game like be like what's up chess bunks here's a game i played and i'm sure someone someone will comment about it someone will ask you about it and yeah, yeah. it can be very easy to join that community definitely <laughs> chess twitter says charlie you just you mean twitter you're right <laughs> yeah just uh, just for um well cool martin this has been great is there um is there anything we missed or anything you you would want to to mention before we we wrap up um i can i can uh, i don't know if there's any questions for, from the the viewers but uh, other than that i can maybe tell you what i'm what my current study plan is uh, oh please that'd be great yeah um I, I, I've got a, a, a coach now, uh, Attila Torso, uh, who is uh, training uh, to, to become a GM himself. Oh, very cool. You're working with uh, International Master Attila Torso, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, nice. I, I think it's, uh, it's, I think it's good, uh, good uh, match. And also because he is uh, an adult uh, trying to, uh, to push himself to uh, the, the next level and uh, a little bit higher level than me, but uh, <clears throat> and but uh, I think it's uh, it's good, uh, and he has some good insights. And he he's pointed out that uh, I need to to work on my my calculation. So um, so now I'm doing uh, uh, just uh, in game studies, and uh, and and I've uh, planned to to do a, a study. Or two uh, each day, and uh, and I also uh, set the goal to to annotate all the longer games I, I play uh, and post them on my blog. So um, that's uh, that's uh, the what I'm I'm up to currently, and 
uh, also going through uh, Alekine, Alekine's uh, best games book is also a, a project I'm I'm working on. Oh, really cool! <laughs> hey, quick quick shout out to to Curly Queen. Thank you so much for uh, for the raid. Um, we are just interviewing Marnin here, aka Say Chess, who is super active in the chess community and on chess Twitter, and does um, uh, provides a ton of value for adult uh, chess improvers out there. So we were just talking about Marnin's um, training with I am Attila Terzo. It's so funny because you guys are like the same. You're at the like the same level. You're just <laughs> like the adult improver improvers posting about like your journeys. Um, <laughs> he's of course going for uh, the GM title, and I really hope he gets it because I mean he's just it looks like he's working uh, so hard and and so consistently. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's kind of cool that you you have like a similar a similar path, and and I feel like as we've mentioned with you and with Neil it. It helps when you have the community or a community behind you or even like a, a motivated partner or two. Um, actually, one of the biggest things for my chess uh, happened a few years ago when I was in FM. I moved in with a master, uh, my friend Tom. Shout out to, to Tom Riccardi, who's really strong uh, chess player. And and that was great because we, we then played and studied chess like every day. And we always had a board and we always solved some studies and we had some tournaments lined up, you know, and it was just like, yeah, when there's someone else working with you, you're, I think, guaranteed uh, to do more and, and to feel more motivated. So the, there's got to be something to that. Yeah, it's also like it definitely also helps me because I'm, yeah, I can I tend to like go in many different directions. And so it's helped me some kind stay a little bit accountable and and, and try to stay on course Uh so uh, I, I definitely think it's it's a good idea for me to to um, to work together with a, with a coach. Uh, so I'm looking forward to to continue this um, in the rest of the year, and I hope to play some more, get to play over the board soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's going to be great. Yeah, this yeah this whole thing is going to. I mean, we've it's amazing we've had a chess boom. I just realized without chess tournaments. <laughs> yeah. Like there are no tournament. I mean, the U.S. There's like you know, U.S. Open, Vegas. There's huge, huge events, right? That always bring players in. But we have this move with no like real tournaments happening. It's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So interesting to see what happens when when tournaments come back. Yeah. Um, well, Martin, thanks so much for for joining us. Um, I'll just remind folks that they can follow you on uh, Twitter. They can subscribe to your blog and to your Substack. Um, they should check out your your YouTube channel and your website, How to Play Chess on Online, um, for a collection of um, uh, videos from from other YouTube chess channels. And um, you have one book out already called Blindfold Endgame Visualization, uh, which is uh, just a really useful tool, I think, to work on uh, folks blindfold chess. And you're working on a couple more books in the blindfold series, right? Upcoming is the opening yeah, one. Yeah, and and. And people on the, the Substack newsletter will get uh, a free PDF when when uh, before I publish, so um, I can get feedback hopefully also. So um, yeah, awesome. sign up if you are interested. <laughs> so guys, if you want a free, if you didn't hear that, if you want a free PDF copy of Martin's uh, upcoming book, sign up for the Substack. And I remember, I mean, for the newsletter, you just sent it out to everyone uh, who signed up for the previous one. So. Uh, that's definitely something I would encourage people to take advantage of. Quick question from Madlook twenty twenty: How often do you meet with your coach? Um, it's been uh, every fourteen day. Uh, I think that's uh, it's a good um, uh, um, period of time. Uh, I get to play some games and like, we can discuss and. Um, Maybe if if I would were to play a tournament, then we could step it up. But I think uh, at the current uh, schedule, uh, one session every fourteen days is, is fine for me. And because most of the work I need to do myself, and and so, uh, but it's I think it's good to have somebody you can just check in and and make uh, to talk about how it's doing, what problems do you have, and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. That makes sense to me. I mean, I uh, I've worked with a few adults, and yeah, a lot of times we'll meet every 
two, three, four weeks, uh, just more of like, like a consultation and working on something. And then, yeah, it's most of the work is up to, up to the student. Um, okay. A few, few good questions coming in. Have you tried the visualize series from Chessable? I actually uh, uh, haven't tried it yet, um, but um, but I, I know what it is. Um, so um, so I probably should try it out at some point. <laughs> yeah, I've heard I've heard good things about it. a lot of folks yeah. in the dojo. Yeah, um, I also uh, got it recommended. So cool. Um, from what level do you think it makes sense to have a coach? And then um, similar question to that: What would be your best advice? to someone in their 40s trying to improve as a beginner? Um, I definitely think that um, you should uh, try to uh, to carve out, out some time and, 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 and see uh, where you can schedule chess in. And if it's commuting time or if it's uh, watching less TV, I, uh, I I've almost stopped watching TV shows, so uh, that's one one area you can uh, you can cut down, or you can try to um, otherwise see where you, it fits in, and then try to um, to 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 play longer games and analyze those games, and and also find some interesting books that you'll find interesting. Um, and 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 finally, also, I would re recommend to to find some some kind of community if it's the dojo or just Twitter or um, a combination of those. Uh, it can also be, of course, to 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 join the local chess club. Uh, that was also, would also be a, a great step uh, to 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 watch improvement and then um, get to play these uh, tournament when uh, when it's uh, it's possible. Um, yeah, that would be mine my, my my advice. Well, cool. well, um, thanks, Martin. This uh, this was really great. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and it was awesome to thank you for to finally for having me. <laughs> Absolutely, no, you've been a friend of the dojo since the the very beginning, pretty much. So it's it's been great <laughs> and um, absolutely a huge part of the of the community. So um, keep yeah. it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, exactly. Keep it up. I can't wait to see your future projects, your future books. Um, I'll definitely be using your books actually for some of my own lessons, like with students. I mean, it's an easy way to build up visualization. So I really, I really do believe in that. So guys, make sure to follow right. Martin on, on Twitter and on his uh, blog and newsletter. Um, all right, everyone, that's going to be it. <laughs> See you guys next time. Thank you, Martin. Bye. Take care.